Hey everybody, welcome back to the cabin. Uh, we've had a hiatus of uh, almost a year. Uh, the COVID thing hit and Chris and I were unable to get together. Uh, I've had a, a bunch of uh, health issues this year that we've I just coming off a new knee surgery where I had a knee replacement and a couple other things that happened. So uh, we're back at it. Everybody's good, everybody's healthy, and the cabin is nice and cozy here on a nice winter day. So today, I wanna to talk to you about a real important uh, bug, fly, creature that is very important to not only trout anglers, but steelhead anglers when springtime rolls around and the young king salmon are coming up out of the gravel. Here's the fly, it's called a sack fry. Uh, I'm gonna tie it for you, but it is predominantly, uh, mostly egg sack with some beady eyes and then some scant materials that will imitate the developing body of a young salmon coming up out of the gravel. What happens is these, these uh, young sack fry come up out of the gravel, they immediately move to the slack water along the edge of the river, the softest water they can find. Mind you, the water temperatures are cold because this typically happens you know, in March and at the latest uh, early April. And so they're seeking soft water with some nutrient in it so they can feed. What happens is there's literally millions of these coming up out of the gravel in streams where king salmon and coho salmon spawn. The brown trout and other trout species know this uh, as, as well as a steelhead, and we will frequently see activity in these very soft, seams or inside the seam towards the bank of these swirls. And what those swirls are, are fish eating these young sack fry. They're typically fished on a floating line. Uh, I use uh, metal bead chain eyes to sink it just a little bit. Uh, a, a seven weight rod is perfect. There's some big browns uh, on the Manistee and other rivers during this time of the year feeding on these. So, you know, uh, seven weight is important. And we use a floating line with, uh, you know, about a 10 to 12 foot leader, uh, depending on water clarity, what your tippet size is. But certainly uh, no less than three X uh, because about half the fish that come out of those soft pockets are steelhead that are moving in to spawn and are still feeding aggressively. So let's tie the sack fry. Let's mount up a, a hook. This is a single egg hook and a size eight. The thread I'm using is a 50 denier GSP in white. I'm gonna dress the front half of the hook because what I'm gonna do is <clears throat> lay down the bead eyes, the bead chain eyes first. So <clears throat> I'm gonna undersling these beads on the underside of the hook so that the hook attitude stays proper. So once I get those positioned where I want them on the hook shank, I'm going to figure eight and lock those on. And we got a good bite, we've got a good set. I think we're all set. Okay, bead chain eyes are on. Little spot of glue here is okay. Um, you know, these are very fast flies to tie. I'm, I, uh, I don't worry about it too much. Next, uh, we're gonna take a bit of this ice dub in orange and we're gonna make a little ball out of it. And I'm gonna show you how this, how this works. I'm just pulling the staples to stack this to make a, a little patch like that. 
It's probably three quarters of an inch long. I'm gonna spin the vise. This is gonna go on right in between the bead chain eyes. I'm gonna go around it twice. Then I'm gonna lift and I'm gonna go behind the bead chain and in front of the dubbing with one or two wraps. So that's what that looks like before it's trimmed. It's, you know, like a long beard. Now we're gonna lift this straight up and take our scissors just um, between the point of the hook and the shank of the hook and cut a straight line. And that gives us our sack fry yolk, the, the, the yolk of the egg underneath where this particular uh, pattern where that, that yolk exists. This is a uh, marabou, a grizzly marabou, uh, typically found on, the, on a hen saddle patch. Through the center here, you can see all this nice barred marabou. That's where this comes from, and we're gonna, I'm gonna tie two versions of this fly, one with the marabou and then one with the rabbit zonker strip. Uh, so we're just going to position that about like so, measured out to about an inch or inch and a quarter is what these critters measure out to be. We're gonna set that in front of the bead chain. We're gonna go over it twice or three times, position it, I'm gonna go three times, position it, give a hard pull. I'm gonna stand it up here, take a thread real close and I'm gonna trim it. So that's ready to go. Last is a product called Shimmer Fringe. This is a, a hairline product it's called Ice Dub Shimmer Fringe and it is ultra, ultra fine. Again, what we want is this body to wiggle as much as possible uh, like, the, like the real deal. So we're gonna do a rather sparse, there's probably a dozen of these don't hold me to that, but that, you know, you'll see when we get to the product here how it, so that just goes over the top to add a little flash. I'm gonna position it right in the center. And then I'm gonna fold that back. And that's our flash. And now we're gonna whip finish. Five wraps will do it. And because <clears throat> of the size of the stem on that marabou, which is very small, we're gonna add a spot of thin penetrating head cement, and that'll suck up in the marabou, maybe an eighth of an inch up towards the dorsal of the, of the little fish, and also seal the threads around the eye. That's the marabou version of this fly. Uh, and I'm now gonna tie the rabbit version, which is equally as productive. They both have incredible movement. So we'll do the same process, only this time we're gonna use a zonker strip. Let me snip a pair of these. What do you think of my pink snippers? They're just lovely. You know, it just shows the softer side of me. Position the bead chain. You can see, you can tie a lot of these pretty quickly and they're just a phenomenal fly. Again, a little bit of the ice dub orange. We'll just stack some together here so we make a bump. Get right 
right on the bottom. One right there. And trim. There's the yoke. Now comes the, uh, the zonker strip. Use eighth inch zonker here. Otherwise, it's just uh, too heavy if you go with a magnum. And we're going to tie that right in front, just like that. And again, we want this about the same length, about an inch, inch and a quarter. Might be a little long. I'm going to take another eighth of an inch off. Okay, and add the shimmer fringe. Again, very sparse. Right across the back. Position. Whip finish and we're done. I'm gonna add a little spot of head cement here as well. The reason I like that 50 denier GSP thread is it is very strong and it lays really flat. So it uh, doesn't disrupt the, you know, the, the, the small area that we're tying in. We're not bulking it up with a big bulky thread. So that is the Sack Fry uh, springtime pattern. Phenomenal. Uh, most of the salmon fry, they will develop in the month of April, uh, start to return to the lake in mid-May through May and the first week of June, they're pretty much gone out of the system. So this is a March and mid-April fly. Enjoy. Enjoy.